So let's take a look at some examples of computing midpoints between two points. In section 1.1, I'm looking at page 62, problem number 5. Again, we have P being 3, 5, Q being minus 2, 5. And part B of this problem asks us to compute the midpoint between P and Q. And once again, we've got x1s, x2s, y1s, and y2s to deal with. And once again, it doesn't matter which gets to be x1 and which is x2, so long as y1 goes with x1 and y2 goes with x2. So if we have p be x1, then that makes 5 y1. And so q is forced to be x2, y2, minus 2 being x2, and 5 being y2. So now that we've filled in all the numbers in our formula, if we just recall the formula, x1 plus x2 divided by 2, that's our x-coordinate, and the y-coordinate is y1 plus y2 all over 2. And with each one of these as a number, we can plug in and compute what the midpoint is. So we have 3 plus a minus 2. Now that plus doesn't make that negative go away. I have a plus here from the formula and a negative from the point. They both appear. And it'll end up being 3 minus 2. y1 and y2, 5 plus 5, they're both 5, divide by 2. So this is 3 minus 1 over 2, comma, 10 over 2, 2 over 2, and 10 over 2 is 5. So we have the point 1 5 as our midpoint. And if we check the intuition, because if you recall, this was just a simple case of P and Q being on the same horizontal line. It's just that P was located over the x-coordinate 3, and Q is located over the x-coordinate minus 2. So the midpoint is still 5 high, is still on this line. And granted, this drawing is crappy, so forgive me for this. But it's still being on the line is a good thing, because that's exactly what we'd expect. And the point, you know, its x-coordinate lies exactly halfway between minus 2 and 3, or at least it should if my drawing wasn't this crappy. So good. Once again, our formulas match up with intuition in kind of very simple cases. So telling us that, giving us confidence that this is the right formula for what we want. Now, if I look at 6, in this case, P was minus 1, minus 5, and Q, Q was 2, minus 3. And we'll do part B again to find the midpoint. So we'll switch it up, because P could be x1, y1, or it could be x2, y2 doesn't matter if we happen to choose x2, y2 this time that means q gets to be the x1, y1 so long as x1 and y1, x2 and y2 so long as they're kept together doesn't matter what the order is 
So, our formula for the midpoint is x1 plus x2 divided by 2, comma, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. The average of the x coordinates and the average of the y coordinates. So let's see, what do I have? x1 in this case is 2 plus a minus 1. minus 1 being x2, y1 is minus 3, and y2 is minus 5. So now we just have to do the arithmetic. This is 1 over 2, 1 half. This is minus 3 minus 5. So that's like just adding 3 and 5, but letting the result be negative. So 3 and 5 is 8, so this will be a minus 8 over 2, which is minus 4. And there's nothing left to do. No more operations. This right here, that's our midpoint.